right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Chilly change. Why the cool air could cause concerns by Sunday morning in the coldest spots. Plus the late evening update from the storm surveys team on tornadoes yesterday. For the third time since 2015, a historic North City home is hit by a speeding driver. The homeowner sharing her frustrations with Five on Your Side. Nothing's being done. They're constant. They drive through here as though this is what they do. How the city is responding tonight. But first, could the city's crime problem have a new solution? St. Louis police are now considering extending officers' work days. Certainly, we're looking at every possibility. The proposal comes as St. Louis is dealing with a major officer shortage. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. St. Louis police are considering whether to have officers work 11 hour days instead of eight hour days. Five on your side's Brent Solomon is live downtown with what he's learning, Brent. Well, Kelly, we got our hands on internal memos that show conversations about this topic were set to happen this week at the police headquarters. Those who are for it say it will put more officers on the street. Others say it could lead to burnout. Five on your side has learned St. Louis police are considering different options. One includes four days on and four days off. Another involves officers rotating the weekends they work. There's also a proposal to allow officers to work six days in a row, with two days off initially, then three days off in between. All of them would mean 11-hour workdays. Anything that we can do to try to ensure that we have the right number of officers on the street that are able to respond to calls in a timely manner and provide the service that the citizens uh, expect and deserve. We took the idea to SLU criminal justice instructor Kenya Brumfield-Young. While it can have, you know, enhance coverage, um, there's you know, less you know, commuting, there's extended presence within the community. She also points to the possibility of fatigue, especially with a department that's down more than 300 officers. Which could affect you know, an officer's decision making, react, reaction times, or just their overall health. I think that they believe that raising the amount of hours is a good idea. I, I just think it'll be too much on the officers that are there. Former St. Louis cop Pierre Cochran worked with the department for three years before resigning to go into sales. He's in touch with his former colleagues. The few that I did speak to, none of them really liked the idea of the 11 hour shifts. The fatigue, like just thinking about how much harder they would have to work. Eight hour shifts were already, you know, typically 10, 11 hours as is with that setup, with that structure. So going to 11 hours, what are we looking at? 15 hours, 16 hours. St. Louis County Police, not to be confused with the city. County Police, they've been working 12 hour shifts for more than a year now. For that to happen or for the 11 hours to happen here in the city, it would require changes from the Board of Aldermen because it would involve changes in the pay structure. So officials at the police department says none of this will happen overnight. We'll keep you posted. Live downtown, Brent Solomon, five on your side. New tonight, the Missouri Highway Patrol is investigating a deadly car and motorcycle crash in Jefferson County. Happened around 7 near the intersection of Highway H and 21 in DeSoto. Highway Patrol says one person died. They're investigating what caused it. Tonight, a young boy is in the hospital after they were shot in North St. Louis County. Just before 6, county police responded to the shooting on Green Valley Drive. The four-year-old was shot in the leg. He has minor injuries. The investigation is ongoing. A St. Louis woman says for years, speeding drivers have slammed into her historic property in North City. And now she's had enough. Tonight, she contacted Five in Your Side's Robert Townsend, who took her concerns to City Hall. For more than 50 years, Catherine Goins has enjoyed living in this 148-year-old historic home in the College Hill neighborhood in North St. Louis. She and her late husband, Benjamin, the first African-American sheriff in St. Louis, raised their four children here. This house has features that are not in many homes. I have an organ, 1,700 pipes imported from Germany. All the first floor windows in the transom are imported from Germany. I love being 
over here. But an ongoing problem has disturbed her peace. Nothing's being done. Going says since 2015, drivers have sped down East College Avenue near Condi during three different incidents and crashed into her wrought iron gate. And torn up by kids, stolen SUV. Ran. And the brick wall that surround her home. She told police last month four young men and a woman plowed into her brick wall, jumped out of a car, and took off. All had guns, all had masks on. Her daughter lives across the street. I'm fed up, uh, as, as well as my mom. For several years now, this speed hump has been right here, just down the street from Catherine Goins' home. Yet she tells me drivers continue to speed down this street. Near the area uh, that that house is, is actually one of our 10 most deadliest uh, intersections. Officials hope a recently passed bill aimed at bringing red light cameras to city streets will also help put the brakes on reckless driving near Goins' home. We are using data to look at the areas that need that type of enforcement, and this absolutely could be an area where something like that gets set up. My prayer is always peace, people being safe. Robert Townsend, five years side. Gowen says she would also like to see police crack down on speeding drivers in her neighborhood. Well, storms spread out across the region yesterday. I want to show you just some of the damage. Wind gusts up to 100 miles an hour ripped roofs off of barns and property at Brookdale Farms in Eureka. And there was also storm damage in the Metro East. Here is a look at what heavy winds did to a grandstand at Worldwide Technology Raceway. And here is video taken by a viewer who saw a tornado touchdown in Greene County, Illinois. Just one of more than a half dozen in the region. Well, it's 24 hours later and a calm night, thankfully, across yes. the by state. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is here with our weather first forecast. Yeah, we would have been playing baseball over at Bush Stadium uh, no. last night with those storms. Nine confirmed tornadoes. That is the final tally that we have. Two of them were because of spotters and video of the tornadoes on the ground, like you just saw that one up in Greene County. There wasn't any damage that the National Weather Service folks can find. They went up there, looked around. Uh, went everywhere that the spotters said there could have been damage, couldn't find anything. So it gets a rating of EFU, which is unknown intensity. But all of them were quick spin ups lasting 10 minutes or less. There's that picture, another one from Tracy up in Greenfield. With, you know, you see something like this, that's picturesque, but you don't want to see that in your backyard for sure. Things have settled down across the region. We are dropping back into the 50s tonight. We'll have some clouds coming and going at times right on through the weekend. But at this point, things have settled such that we're going to be pretty quiet right through the weekend, just dealing with cooler temperatures, about 10 degrees below average. Kelly, we may be talking about a little bit of frost as we head towards Sunday morning in some of the outlying areas. More on that in a few minutes. Everyone is enjoying the night tonight at Bush Stadium as the Cardinals begin a six game home stretch, bringing tens of thousands of fans to downtown St. Louis. And this week talks about future renovations at Bush Stadium are making headlines. Andy Crawl is live outside the stadium with reaction from fans. Kelly, things really heating up right now at Bush Stadium. No weather, pun intended. Tied up one to one in the bottom of the ninth. And of course, now we're into extra innings. Corey Miller will have more for you in sports later on in the show. But I want to talk about a recent report that the team has discussed a little bit because it says there may be some potential public funding when it comes to any of those possible renovations. And the Cardinals president, Bill DeWitt III, saying an idea of public funding is just too premature at this moment. And one of the biggest things that I kept hearing after all of this is that, of course, it was one of the smallest crowds in stadium history just last week. Red birds and red hots on a Friday night. Karen Boschert has been selling hot dogs in St. Louis for 26 years. So when you want to look at attendance numbers at Bush Stadium, you may want to count your dogs. It's slow. It's not what it usually is. The weather, you know, the last time uh, we had the eclipse that hurt us a little bit that night. Um, when the Blues, I think they're done now, but that affects us. It all affects us when they have soccer and battle hawks because everybody has season tickets for a lot of the places. Karen lost about $40,000 last year, her worst Cardinal season ever. So she's happy to see fans pouring back in. The Cardinals told us they had advanced sales of over 37,000 tickets for Friday's game. 
pointing to being ranked fifth in the league for average home game attendance this season, only trailing big markets like the Dodgers and Yankees. One fan from St. Charles has been coming every other week. Attendance has been fantastic every game that I've been at so far, so I can't speak for the other ones, but every game I've been at has been great. So great, fans aren't sure why there have been conversations about the Cardinals potentially doing renovations sometime over the next few years. A consideration as Bush Stadium approaches its 20th anniversary in 2026. I mean, I don't have much experience with other stadiums, but I, we've never had an issue here of anything. Getting in and out is easy. Everything you need is kind of right there. Some fans online have said fixing aging infrastructure or new amenities may come in part from public funding. And the thing to remember here is that the Cardinals will not be making any further comment right now about a hypothetical public funding. But our partners at the St. Louis Business Journal sat down and spoke with the Cardinals president. And he said in part, and I quote, why would I be out asking for public money when I don't even know what I'm asking for? Reporting live at Bush Stadium, Annie Crawl, five on your side. A jury is now in place in the trial of a man accused of killing a St. Louis police officer. Police say Thomas Kenworthy fatally shot Officer Tamaris Bohannon and wounded another in August of 2020. The case has been delayed several times since then. Kenworthy pleaded not guilty by reason of mental defect and followed months of mental evaluations. When the case made it to court in January, the lead prosecutor got sick, postponing the trial until now. It's expected to last about two weeks.